Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I've been catching up on my watch later and a lot of cartoonist kayfabe. They were talking about this issue right here, Uncanny X-Men 273. They are in some ways my contemporaries. We were reading the same books back in the late 80s, early 90s. But um, I was so frustrated listening to them because they were getting confused by the styles of very different artists to the point where I started saying to myself, is this something that people just don't notice? Like they can't tell the difference between different artists? Because you would think cartoonist kayfabe would just immediately be able to say, that's Rick Leonardi, that's Will Sportatio. But no, they would like have to puzzle it out. And then at one point they brought up Midnight Suns, which came out like 30 years ago. And they were like, oh yeah, Mark Teixeira did the cover. And then one of them said, and then he also did an interior story for that book. And then I think it was Ed Piscor was like, no, he didn't. He just did the cover. How do you remember that 30 years later? Because you're an expert in this time period. So this was a jam issue where a bunch of artists each took a few pages. And I felt like I was taking crazy pills when they were looking at these pages and then trying to like guess who it was. It reminds me of something a friend said years ago. He found out that Zachary Quinto was gay. And he said, I didn't know that Zachary Quinto was gay. And I said, I didn't know it was possible to not know he was gay. So is this like gaydar for styles? Like, I find it mind blowing that anyone looks at this, having seen any other book drawn by Wills Portatio, and they don't immediately say, that's Wills Portatio. First of all, this thing he does back here, where you will get these very tight lines for the figures, and then almost kind of like a blurry, bleeding line for some backgrounds, he does that all the time. Jim Lee picked up on it, but Wills Portatio did it first. These insanely overdeveloped thighs, that's Wills Portatio. Uh, OCD makes collecting comics kind of a funny little hobby, because if a comic is too nice, I don't want to read it because then I will ruin it. But once a comic has been ruined, for instance, this issue got ruined by rain because I had it out on my drawing desk in high school, I left the window open, the rain came in, and quote, ruined it. Oh my god, I read this thing one million times. So you can see here, Wills Portatio, Klaus Janssen, John Byrne, Rick Leonardi, Mark Silvestri, Michael Golden, Larry Stroman, and Jim Lee. Now they were all inked by Scott Williams, but Scott Williams isn't one of those inkers who completely obliterates someone's style. So to me it was like crazy that anyone can look at this having already known all of these artists and not immediately be able to name each individual artist. So this is more Wills Portatio. Then we go to Claus Jansen. Specifically this right here with these awkward kind of like action figure poses. That's Claus Jansen to a T. Very, very rough inking style. These kind of blocky Eastern European looking characters. But this super stiff, almost like turtle shell back. Claus Jansen does that all the time. And that's just a very Claus Jansen face right there. Also this thing right here with the shadow and the zip tone Now right here is John Byrne. And again, I don't know how anyone can look at this knowing who John Byrne is and not immediately say that's John Byrne. This mouth right here on Cyclops, that's a classic John Byrne visual shorthand. The way he draws tech, that's John Byrne. Hey, wait a minute. That storm drawing right there. Yeah, <laughs> looks like there was a little old school analog copy pasta going on right there. Books like this would not have been drawn in order. It would have been just segments parceled out and then they turn them into whoever. And if you happen to be in the Marvel office and you're Klaus Jansen and you say, hey, I got like two days to do these pages. John Byrne already took the time. He knows how to draw this version of Storm's costume. So I recognize John Byrne from the tech from this mouth, from this kind of squarish head shape, even the way he does the folds in this uh, leather sleeve. I mean, that face. 
even if you barely know who John Byrne is, you've got to look at these two faces and recognize that as John Byrne. This one especially. I think this was the part where they really just started professing being utterly unable to identify who the artists are. Okay, this is Rick Leonardi. There is not a clock that exists on Earth that can measure the short, basically instantaneous amount of time it takes for me to look at this art and say it's Rick Leonardi. This kind of chunky style of tech, that's Rick Leonardi. This almost kind of like horse-like or dog-like legs where there'll be like this really extreme arch to them even though she's standing still with a straight leg. There's something about the angle of the musculature and this kind of awkward pose. Instantly Leonardi. These faces, but even the way he does perspective shots, the composition he chooses, Leonardi. Now here's Mark Silvestri, and again, they were puzzling it out. Especially then, Mark Silvestri would like kind of barely draw the female faces. It would just be the contour and barely any details at all. Look at all of the detail in Gambit's face, and he's supposed to be like 25 years old. Then look at Storm. You might say that doesn't look like it's finished, but no, that's how he chose to draw women. I mean, this right here is like... I could have freaking cataracts and tell this was Mark Silvestri. Michael Golden, the cartoony style, this visual shorthand for the tech. This was years before Joe Mad and Adam Warren brought manga sensibilities to mainstream American comics. But Michael Golden had already been doing it for a decade. And of course, here's Jim Lee. Jim Lee, especially at this time, was doing this grid for a lot of the pages. If it didn't have a great action scene, he would do this because it was easier. He always used to get saddled with the size stuff, which I thought was really lame. Usually give this kind of like silver surfer sheen to people who are in their psi forms. Finally, Larry Stroman with just two pages. And no, it's not a big butt that gives it away. There's a curious lack of huge Larry Stroman booties in these two pages. But this style of drawing hair, this style of shading, almost silhouette-like, these kind of noodling kind of bullshit backgrounds, but spending time on what people actually like and giving each of these characters their own individual and dynamic pose, over-the-top kind of cartoony aspects like this. In another cartoonist kayfabe, they were covering a book about Frank Miller talking to Will Eisner, and Frank Miller said, my cars became characters when I started drawing them 10 feet off the ground. If you read Sin City, all the cars are always cresting a hill and shooting up like 10 feet above the asphalt. So just a really cartoony, fun style, but also quick and honestly a little bit lazy. That's Larry Stroman to a T. So let me know if you just immediately are able to discern different styles. Or does your brain just say, this is American comics from the early 1990s. And since it was all inked by one inker, in this case Scott Williams, is it difficult for you to tell apart? It's crazy to me that anyone would struggle at all to tell these very different artists apart from each other. Anyway, before I go... First Kill Graphic Novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.